new education standards are changing the way children are being taught in our public schools. But how do parents feel about this new education system? Find out on Talking with Henrietta, coming up next. Hi, I'm Henrietta. Welcome to the show. In 2009, a new teaching method called Common Core Standards was mandated for public schools throughout the U.S. These new standards were designed to enable all students throughout America to graduate from high school with a high-quality education. On previous shows, we've looked at the Common Core Standards themselves, We've discussed how teachers are being trained to teach using them, and we've examined the new ways students are now being tested. On this show, we'll talk to the parents to find out how they feel about the new Common Core Standards. How much do they understand them, and do they think the new way of teaching will enable their children to learn what they need to learn to graduate and develop the academic skills they'll need as adults? I have a parent and a representative from the Ravenswood City School District in East Palo Alto with me. On my far left is Gino Veron, a parent in the school district, and seated next to him is Lupe Aceves, who is the parent outreach coordinator for the Ravenswood City School District. On my right is Shelley Mazur, who is the CEO of the Californians Dedicated to Education Foundation. Shelley is also a member of the Redwood City Board of Education. And seated beside Shelley is the president of Children Now, Ted Limpert. Well, thank you for joining me. It's a delight to have you with me. The Thanks Common Core. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should at least let you respond. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. The Common Core standards have. Um, created a lot of controversy throughout the country. But that doesn't seem to be the case in California. Uh, Ted, you're with Children's Now, and the organization just came out with a new poll. Yes. So tell us about it. Well, you framed it up uh, very well by saying, you know, there's a controversy or perceived controversy around the country. And, and our hunch was that that really had not been in play in California, that there really wasn't the same controversy or at least political squabbling that you heard nationally. So we uh, commissioned a poll from a very reputable public opinion f uh, firm and uh, the results actually are quite extraordinary. Um, one, there's strong support for Common Core among parents and all voters in, in California. Uh, Two-thirds uh, support Common Core when you ask them about th those words that you support Common Core. Um, particularly high among uh, teachers and folks who work in schools. Um, and also high among uh, African-American, Latino, and, and Asian-American population, a higher support than um, uh, Caucasian. Uh, what was most interesting about the poll, though, we, the public opinion firm, in addition to saying, do you support Common Core, they asked questions about the components of Common Core, and without calling it Common Core, and, and said, do you support these things? For example, uh, really pushing critical thinking among our students, uh, making sure that all subjects have a math and English component to them. And, and that's where the poll results were really interesting. The support was around 90%. You don't get 90% for <laughs> anything these days. So the, the point and what we really saw from the poll was there's some confusion around the words Common Core, um, certainly I think even more so outside of California. Uh, but then when you talk about them as updated standards and when you say, well, here's what Common Core is, 
there was overwhelming support um, from parents uh, and the public, uh, which is pretty interesting when you, you, know, you took that sure, big statewide snapshot. Sure. We were expecting about three parents on the show, so I'm delighted at least to have Gino mm -hmm. and Lupe mm -hmm. uh, talking on behalf of some of the parents. Mm -hmm. uh, Ted just now <laughs> mentioned the excitement in California among some of the parents, teachers, administrators. What do you think is, is behind that excitement? And are you excited? Um, <laughs> I'm, I, I guess I'm, I'm going to say I'm not excited really about the common core standards. I think what parents, and this is my opinion, I think what parents are excited about and we've been waiting for is a change. Um, it's been long overdue. And I think that, at least for me, that's the excitement, you know, that finally there's a change. Is, it common, is common core state standards the answer? We don't know yet. So, so I, we welcome the change. At least I welcome the change. What is it about the educational system that you think or that you thought needed changing? Well, I don't think, I, I'm, I'm just saying in, you know, all, uh, my, like my parents and, and adults before me, because I'm quite new <laughs> in the fatherhood. Um, I, know, I know there was all rambling, right, that there was outdated, and we're, we're, you know, and then even in industry now, you know, there, we uh, talk about how our children are not prepared, even coming out of college. You know, I think the expectation is a little higher even. And, and so there's, there's a lot of movement even within industry is, is trying to find the right candidates. And that's why we've been going outside of the country and, and many industries going outside the country and getting, um, you know, employees. Lupe. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I'll get back to you. As a parent coordinator, what, what kind of reactions or feedback are you getting from some of the parents? Um, the, some of the parents that I um, went to some of the informational sessions on Common Core, this was a year or maybe even two years ago, um, they were excited about the changes and the um, doing away with multiple choice and the more hands-on learning and the, and, um, the more real world. Um, work that we're hoping that is going to happen and that teachers will be trained and um, this preparation for high school for our district to be aligned with the high school district and therefore our children will go to college and be ready for the real world um, that's exciting um, I think the other part for me is uh, the partnership w with parents and teachers that, that teamwork, that partnership, that Common Core is, is, a, is a part of Common Core. So that gets me excited. That teachers, um, that um, the accountability for teachers to connect with parents. More so than, than, than in the past. Sure, now Lupe talked about the partnership between parents and teachers and you work as a part of what you're doing to build collaborations mm -hmm. between right. parents, teachers, among whom or between whom? <laughs> well, first I want to just add, I, I'm a parent as well, so I'm excited as a parent for my kids to be learning um, with standards that are encouraging. Some of the things you just you both just identified, collaboration, critical thinking. Um, Ted talked about some of the things that people were excited about in the poll. And for myself, thinking about what do I want my kids to learn? How do I want them to be prepared for our future? What do I know being out in the world? Um, <clears throat> running an organization, what am I going to look for in people that I hire? Those are the things that are starting to be brought in through these new state standards. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm personally excited about it. But professionally, our organization partners with, the, uh, with a variety of education stakeholders, children now being one. Um, but we work closely with the California Department of Education. And what we've been doing with Common Core specifically is bringing together partners at the state level to help them um, provide their members, we work with large membership organizations across the state, teachers association, parents association, the administrators, um, school board members, to help them provide their members with ways to talk about Common Core at the, at the local level. Mm -hmm. um, so as a school board member, I look to my association to help me figure out how do I, what do, what's, what do I need to know and what do I want to say about um, specific issues. So in this instance, we're helping them with their communications around Common Core. So, Ted, in the poll that you spoke of, do you think those being polled were ex 
expressing their aspirations because you talked about Latinos and African American yeah. parents very excited, yep. but Caucasian parents not so much. Well, I, I, I think we want to stay away from the politics of it, but to answer your question, I think part of the problem with the national debate has been the, the poli politics. And so um, the, this show is, is much better than some of the stuff I've seen when I flipped on Fox News, mm -hmm. but there has been this drumbeat against Common Core that I, I think has gotten somewhat partisan. So what the pollsters told us, what they saw, uh, because they can break it down by you know ethnicity, age, party affiliation, um, that there was much more support among Democrats than Republicans, and we really attributed that not that Common Core is a Democratic thing, but that there's unfortunately, not in California, but in other states, a drumbeat by a lot of Republican leaders. That's why the poll was so interesting, though, because when you just took the words away and, and you asked Republican Caucasian voters, you, you, you know, what do you think ah. of, uh, of having critical thinking? What do you think about this? They were like, oh, that sounds great. It, you mm -hmm. know, so it really showed that the politics were getting in the way of what Common Core. I mean, I don't want to overstate it. I think, you, you know, what's exciting about it, and I think I'm also a parent as well, it's the, the change, the improvement, it's the updating. You know, mm -hmm. I think, and the, and the poll showed people <clears throat> wanted that. I mean, it, I, I think the jury's still out. We, we, the, the question was not, is Common Core the, you know, the, 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 what's going to totally solve all our problems with education? But it, what it did show was folks really like these updated standards mm -hmm. that they seem to think they made a lot more sense than what we had before. Mm -hmm. Shall we talk about preparation? Do you feel that you've been given enough in terms of understanding what the Common Core standards are all about? As a parent, I haven't seen a lot come my way, you know, in, in, in forms of pamphlets, uh, mailings, or anything. Um, I've done a lot of it just on my own research, and I mean there has been talk, obviously, in, in uh, school site council meetings and uh, in district meetings, but it, it hasn't been it hasn't been a, a lot um, a lot of information because we're tackling a lot of a lot of new things too, including you know the LCFF and LCAP, um, so it's a lot coming at us, and so Common Core state standards is it, probably. At the priority level, it's maybe a little lower, um, but but it, it's it's important. Um, so, so that's actually I, I think that's a really good point. And I there one of the things that I think is important for people to understand is that our state is really undergoing a remodeling of public education, and so the standards are one aspect of that. And as you just mentioned, there we've also changed the way we funded our schools. Mm -hmm. We're changing the way um, we're assessing our kids. We're going to be changing the way we're holding schools accountable. So there are a lot of things that schools are dealing with at the same time. Mm -hmm. And sort of depending on where they are and where they fit into this bigger remodeling of the system, um, they may have emphasized one thing over another. And so to ch when you change your funding formula and your standards in the same year, that's a lot for school mm -hmm. districts to take on, for administrators and teachers, and um, I think I think they're working really hard to get the kind of information out, but maybe not always getting. It I far I out. would think that that could be a, a a drawback when you're changing so much at yeah. one time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to change the educational standards, and that in itself is a sea yeah. change. Yeah. Yeah. But then to change all of these other things, how do you think that's impacting? Uh, and presumably, it's all for the good of the students, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think part of it, I, 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 I mean, sometimes there's the, the opposite frustration, right? Where you look at a company in Silicon Valley or you look at a, a store or, quite frankly, even city or county government, and you, you see a lot of modernization, and we too often see our schools stuck in the past. Mm -hmm. So as a general statement, I, I think there's a lot of things about our education that we do want uh, updated. Um, I think a lot of it is is you know, how teachers and, and, and community leaders talk about all, all the change. And so it, it is said, so, you know, there's a rationale to why we're doing this is not just change for change sake. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, we can always be a lot better about how we're explaining why we're doing these mm -hmm. changes, especially to, you know, to parents. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. I, you know, I work on these issues professionally, but as a parent in my kid's school, I, I, I sometimes realize, wow, you know, I can see how it's overwhelming mm -hmm. and we're not always getting the, the, the clear explanation for why mm -hmm. things are changing. Yeah. Overwhelming, 
do you find some of the students might feel somewhat overwhelmed? Have you seen any differences in the students themselves? I don't work closely enough with the students to, to sure. see that. Sure. With your students, have you, mm -hmm. your children, you have one in kindergarten, what, and another in third grade? Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, I got hmm. Paolo in kindergarten, Dante in third grade. And um, because they're so young, I don't think they've felt the impact. Um, I, I see the impact being more from fourth grade on, who, who have already tasted the old system, and then to have to change them. And I think definitely there's going to be an impact, you know, and, you know, and, and parents, too. I mean, the parents are probably witnessing, and they are witnessing the, the change, and, and they don't know how to react, perhaps. So. Did you go to California schools? I did. And you mentioned growing up within the Ravenswood City yes. School District. Mm -hmm. You weren't held back. No by the former education system. <laughs> Is it that the two of you were just lucky? I think, I think technology has advanced society here in the U.S. Yes. That, in, mm -hmm. that the education got, got stuck in, a, in an old era mm -hmm. and has not progressed with technology. I think so. that's, a, that's, a that's a, such a great point. I technology. mean, one of the things that we have talked a lot about is that we don't even know what kinds of jobs our kids are mm -hmm. going to have in the yeah. future, right? And so um, keeping the, our education system exactly how it was when I was in school, um, it's, it's not, exactly. it is not, as you said, keeping up with what, our, what the world yeah. they'll be entering yeah. in. And mm -hmm. so we want to make sure that we're preparing our kids for the jobs of the future so they're ready to go out and tackle those challenges and help keep us on, a, on this positive course that we're on, for the most part, in California. You were mm -hmm. going to say something, Lupe? Well, I, I, I wanted to share, I guess, um, that the information on Common Core is out there for parents. I mean, informing parents that the new, the new testing is beginning, sending letters to parents, and um, the assessments and uh, the report card changing, the, the, grade, the grading system. So informing parents of all of that. Um, so the information is out there. Um, the information on our web page, also the district website, um, we have a Common Core information there for parents to go in and look at it. We have discussed it at our DAC, DLAC meetings, the school site council meetings. Um, unfortunately, we don't always have uh, large numbers of parents in our district. Um, so I could see some parents feeling that they are not informed. But the information, we are um, putting it out there, and um, it is happening. Maybe um, they're not understanding that the, this, the change of assessments is common core. The common core is, is that's exactly what's happening. Now, a so. lot of the parents, and as you talked, I was thinking mm -hmm. a lot of them maybe have children who are, what, second language? Yes. Mm -hmm. l learners, mm -hmm. which means um, they would need Spanish, wouldn't they? Yes. So mm -hmm. are the materials being given in Spanish yes. for the parents to understand? Yes, and I, I do that on a daily basis. Is, um, translating documents that are going to parents, informing them of the changes and um, the meetings that are happening, the flyers and um, the phone calls, the all calls uh, that I make to families go in English and Spanish, informing them of um, what we have going on at the district. And that's true. At, at one of the, in addition to the poll, children now have been wor working with districts around the state and in, in sending out some really simple messages to share mm -hmm. with parents. And we've been sending it out translated in different mm -hmm. you know, languages, you know, certainly Spanish, but some of the other languages that are spoken as well. Th th there is a phenomenal amount of information on the California Board of Education mm -hmm. website, mm -hmm. and it's in all languages. I mean, yeah. I, don't, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, yeah. you yeah. know, a links to different organizational resources. You know, and that's where I was getting my information from. Um, so parents just parents just need to reach out. Yes, to but websites. you know, you strike me in by what you've <laughs> said that you're very up with the technology, but a lot of parents in this in the school district are not. A lot of parents in in the school district might not have computers in their homes. Mm -hmm. So what accommodations are being made? I don't know. I mean, that, that's a it's a parent choice. Um, you know, I, a lot of parents, whether they can afford it or not, they all have cell phones, and, and more than one cell phone. I mean, even their children have cell phones. I have, I have one, but it's more of an emergency type cell phone, you know, that I use with my wife. And um, it's like a paper use almost. And um, so I use technology at work. You know, I, I do use it at home. But I make wise choices. And so, you know, and parents, 
you know, you could give up a cell phone and, and pay your internet service and educate yourself and your children. But it's, so it's a, it's a personal choice. And I, I've made mine for my family, and everybody's got to make their own. So we're talking about a whole sea change in education. And usually what we hear is, if it's that good, it's too good to be true. Mm -hmm. So I am wondering, are the expectations too high? That everything has changed, but well, do you really expect student performance to change that radically? So it's a good question. So I, I think it's important since the, we're talking about Common Core. Common Core are standards. Mm -hmm. That's just one of many, many pieces. So as Shelley was saying, there's the standards. And I do think, and our poll showed this, but I think we know this just from you know, talking with folks. Everyone gets you need some kind of standards in our schools, just like you need standards for any government agency or any <laughs> private mm -hmm. agency for that matter. But then you have the assessments, and those are different than the standards. And, and then you have the curriculum and how things are being taught. And there's a lot of flexibility in that. Mm -hmm. And so you know, your question is, you know, how are our kids really doing? The standards are just a piece of it. I, I would argue that they're a, 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 a prerequisite, that you, you have to have you know, the overall standards. Where are we getting our kids to? But you know, there's lots that goes into making sure our kids are well educated. And, 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 and so the, you know, the quality of the teaching and the curriculum that's being used and you know, all the different factors you know, that affect kids' uh, development. So um, I, I do think you're raising a good point. I, I don't think folks should think, oh, now we have Common Core. Great. Everything's going to change. It's going to be great. But I, what I would argue, though, is without it, we'd have a real problem because then we wouldn't have updated standards to sort of measure mm -hmm. how we're doing. Yeah, and well, without it, we've had some real problems. Yes. <laughs> <Without it. laughs> well, I was just going to say, I mean, to Ted's point, that the standards are um, what we want kids to know and be able to do. Right? That's, that's what standards are. <coughs> and so then when we do the assessments, which many of our kids are now, you, I assume you are doing them right now in, in, in Ravenswood. They're beginning in May. In May. Yeah. <laughs> so in May. Yes. Um, <laughs> then we'll be, the, for the first time, assessing kids on the Common Core standards. Um, so we'll, you know, it'll be the first time we're assessing, so we'll be setting, really setting mm -hmm. a new baseline and understanding where do we need to improve, how can we do better. But the other pieces, I think, are really critically important. And um, there's a lot of local flexibility in terms of what is the curriculum, what's the curriculum that different districts are using. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there isn't a lot um, that, this, that has been approved yet. And so districts are working individually and working with each other. And actually, in this area, many of the districts are working together um, to develop their math curriculum, to develop their English language arts curriculum. Ravenswood and Redwood City School District are working with uh, several other districts to, to do that. Um, so what does it look like in the classroom is a little bit different for, for, all, for our different schools. Um, and, and so that is going to be a piece of um, how does it going to end up working for kids. Sure. 